OPEC Plus. The group of oil-producing nations unexpectedly cut supply for the rest of 2023, and this could have major implications for markets around the world. In this video, we are going to cover why OPEC Plus announced the cut and more importantly, what the production cut means for businesses and investing this year. So, let's start with what this supply cut means. The oil producing nations known as OPEC Plus announced last week they would voluntarily cut production by a collective 1.66 million barrels per day from May until the end of 2023. The group's motivation for doing so was to stabilize and support the oil market. However, the move came without warning during a period of already sky-high oil prices. This decision caught everyone off guard, sending shockwaves through global oil markets. Oil prices got their biggest daily gain in over a year, and investors are once again worried about the risk of supply not meeting demand. There are a lot of different reasons as to why the group wanted to cut its supply. It could be to show the U.S. that the world doesn't revolve around them, after U.S. officials announced they would not be purchasing more oil to top up its country's reserves. The cut could be a reminder to short sellers about the risks of betting against falling prices. Or more simply, the supply cut is an attempt to up the group's revenues so the group's members can splurge on other projects, such as the massive building projects currently under construction in Saudi Arabia. After all, OPEC Plus is in such a dominant position that higher prices will likely offset the lower volume of production. Finally, it could be anticipating such a huge drop in demand that it wants to limit the downside in prices. There's a lot of speculation as to what the real driver of this cut is, but realistically, it's probably a mix of these, as in any case, the end result would be the same. Oil prices look to stay at their current level for the short term, but shouldn't do any long-term damage to the global economy. This cut will in theory eliminate any surplus oil left in the market, in turn pushing world oil markets into a bigger deficit later this year. This time around, don't expect shale oil producers to come and help us out. They're becoming increasingly price inelastic, meaning their output plans don't change based on the current oil price. And despite all of them having plenty of cash to react to any market changes, they prefer to distribute profits to shareholders instead of reinvesting in production. As you can see in this chart provided by Goldman Sachs, demand for oil will likely exceed the supply from as early as June, the gaps likely to widen over the rest of the year, fueling prices as a result. But don't panic just yet. I don't believe oil prices are about to go crazy because the base case scenario here seems more like slightly higher prices rather than crazily higher ones. Even Goldman Sachs, who are one of the most bullish banks when it comes to oil, has only increased its price target for oil by the end of this year by $5, from $90 to $95, and to $100 for next year. Just bear in mind that prices are likely to miss the mark if the economy falls into a more serious recession, but that is currently looking less likely. On the whole though, the upside risks arguably beat the downside ones. OPEC, pluses, greater than ever pricing power may allow it to intervene in markets to prevent further price falls, almost like creating an OPEC put. Meanwhile, a stronger global economy, combined with the Chinese economy opening back up, would bring about extra demand for fuel, sending prices much higher. Let's take a look at the historical distribution of inflation-adjusted oil prices, making them more comparable over such large time spans. You'll see that you can't underestimate the risk of oil prices moving much higher in a robust economy. As you can see in the chart, oil prices expressed in 2023's dollars have hit the $130 to $140 range almost three times as frequently as they've landed in the $100 to $110 range. Of course, there is no certainty that this will happen here, but take it as an indication that prices can climb much higher than investors expect. So, what does this mean for businesses and investing? Higher oil prices not only increase inflation, but also tend to steer investors' expectations of future inflation. We can hope that the oil price gains set to come this year won't impact the Federal Reserve's fight against inflation, as this would lead to more interest rate bumps. Unfortunately, the threat of higher prices may force the Federal Reserve and European Central Bank to consider more rate increases, even with the fear of a recession and the stress in the banking system being almost at a tipping point. 
Simply put, rising oil prices further complicate an already delicate balancing act for central banks, increasing the risk of something going wrong. Higher oil prices isn't what the economy needs right now, because rising oil prices don't just hurt consumers, as if you spend more on petrol, you spend less on other things, but also companies, as oil is an important cost of production. The higher oil prices get, the bigger the potential hit to consumer spending and companies' profit. And in turn, that pulls up the risk of a simultaneous negative shock to growth and stubbornly high inflation, leading to the dreaded stagflationary environment, which has historically been bad for stocks. So, let's sum up everything. The huge supply cut by OPEC Plus and the resulting oil price spike was and still is completely unexpected, serving as a clear reminder of how uncertain the current macroeconomic environment is. With so many potential paths for the economy, the best thing you can do is diversify your assets to give yourself a better chance at surviving multiple scenarios. So make sure you aren't just investing or holding stocks and consider treasury bonds to protect against a hard landing, gold to protect against a stagflationary scenario, commodities to benefit from reflation and a small amount of Bitcoin to protect against the unintended consequences of monetary and fiscal stimulus. This is a complicated subject, which I am sure will evolve over the course of the year. I will keep you updated with any future changes, so make sure to subscribe for the latest updates. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.